So Apple just released iPadOS 16 Beta 5 to all developers to try out and see if there was any performance gains, any new features, or any persistent bugs with the new operating system. So without further ado, let's talk about iPadOS 16 because there's a few little nuances that are worth sharing. And then of course, we are going to test Stage Manager at the end of the video because that's what I 100 million percent care about the most with the stability of Stage Manager on the iPad Pro with an external display. But let's talk about it. So let's jump right into this video, everybody. The first thing that I like to do with these beta updates is see exactly how big the build size was or the build number itself. So again, this is iPadOS 16 beta 5. And something that I did notice is that Apple usually puts a little beta moniker right next to that. So it'll say beta 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But this time maybe Apple forgot it or they're just kind of saying that, hey, this is the new update. We're not really naming it or anything like that. But it is iPadOS 16 beta 5 at this point, and it's about 1.18 gigabytes. So if you are on the beta program, give yourself at least two gigs, maybe three, in order to get this installed correctly. You always want to think to yourself when installing pretty much anything, honestly, even if it is an application, make sure you have at least twice as much like empty storage in order to get that stuff installed correctly. And it's no different for a beta update. The next thing we're going to do is actually go into the about section in the settings and see what version we're actually on with iPadOS 16. So if I bring this up, you guys can see that we're on iPadOS 16 20A 5339D. So that D moniker lets us know just one thing, which we're getting closer and closer to the actual release date for iPadOS 16 to the entire public, which should release anywhere between September 6th and September 13th, because there is a rumor that September 6th is gonna be the Apple event for all the new iPhones. But again, there was also rumors that the actual iPadOS 16 update was gonna be delayed until October. So I'll leave an article down below explaining why that is, but I think it's heavily has to do with Stage Manager and the inconsistencies that come with Stage Manager as of right now. But keep in mind that iOS 16 should release in September alongside the new iPhones but we are getting closer and closer because we will be getting to that C, B, A, and then eventually dropping the A and getting the RC edition. So the first new things that I'm actually gonna show off are actually all the new splash screens that we got with the update. So the first thing that we got was actually inside a stage manager. So when you do plug into an external display, you're gonna get this pop-up. So it's stage manager with external display. Use an iPad and an external display. You can create the ideal extended workspace and it lets you know exactly what stage manager is. And you can either continue or use screen mirroring, which again, whoever would wanna use screen mirroring, I don't know. Stick with iPadOS 15 if you want a screen mirror. The next one we got is actually inside of the photo. So it just talks about the shared library, copy paste edits, and then merge duplicates. So those are all new things that Apple is kind of, again, helping us enhance our photos experience a little bit better, especially the merge duplicates. That's a really, really big one in my book. The next splash screen we got is actually inside of the app store. So it just lets you know that if you want to turn on notifications, so Apple can, again, bombard you with even more notifications. I always keep them turned off because, again, if I want to update my applications, I'll just go in and update them myself. Then we got a splash screen for the new Maps app. So we have multi-stop routing, which is a great addition. Google Maps has been doing this forever, and I personally use Google Maps right now. You know, I might transition over to Apple because I'm slowly but surely moving everything over to the Apple ecosystem as much as I can. But for now, Google Maps is what I use normally for my actual routing. And then you have special landmarks. So explore beautiful design 3D landmarks in Las Vegas, Seattle, Chicago, and more. We also got some new features in Find My or a new splash screen. So Findable when powered off is a great new addition. So if somebody maybe steals your phone and powers it off, it's still gonna be findable until it like runs out of that reserved battery. So that's beautiful to have. And then Find My Network for AirPods. Your AirPods are more findable than ever, supporting Find My for individual earbuds on the map. So hopefully that'll lessen the amount of people that lose their actual AirPods. And I'm gonna say that I'm one of those people that has never actually lost their AirPods. We also got a new splash screen for HomeKit. And I'm slowly but surely, like I mentioned, moving away from actual Google Home into HomeKit. The last thing that I need to do is move into a HomeKit capable camera because I still use my Nest cameras, but these are some new things. So new home categories, your home at a glance, control your home with a tap and the multi-camera view. So once I get my camera set up, maybe we'll do a video, you know, how I set up my actual home kit in totality because right now I just have a couple lights. I just switched my Google Nest to a Echo B thermostat as well so I can control my temperature in the house. Slowly but surely, we're making moves to being a total home kit house. And shout out Steven Robles from Apple Insider for the inspiration. So in terms of the things that are actually like brand new, maybe new features or new things that have changed up, there isn't too much with iPadOS. You guys have probably seen all the videos and all the articles already about the new you know, battery percentage that's on the iOS 16 beta 5 update. But I'm gonna be honest, not that I really noticed it too much, but I think we've had the ability to show battery percentage on iPads for forever. So I don't think this is a new feature, but you can see that it's there. You can toggle it off and on if you want but you can see that the battery percentage is actually not inside of the battery itself because 
iPads have enough room on their toolbar to show off the entire battery and then also on the side the percentage so you don't see the numbers inside of the battery itself. And then another interesting one that we got was actually when you take a screenshot. So normally when you take a screenshot, again, you can either use your pencil from you know the bottom right, however, however you have it set up, or you can take it with the home button and then the up volume button. But when you press done, we actually have a new feature right here called copy and delete. That has never been there before. So it lets you copy the image but delete it from your actual photo library because if you just press done, you know, you can just save it to photos, but then it's going to take up space in your photos application. And a lot of people don't want that. They normally take a screenshot and then mark it up and then send it off via text message or whatever the case may be. So the copy and delete option is actually a welcome addition for the actual screenshots. And one thing that I did want to test out was when you do take a screenshot and you mark it up. So if I grab this black pen and start to mark it up, you press done, you press copy and delete. So it goes away. Let's go into the notes application. We'll go in here. We can actually paste it. And you can see that the scribble from the copy and paste you know, function is actually still there. So you can still mark it up, copy, delete, and then send it off after the fact. And then one more quick setting that we did notice was inside the settings application, if you go into the Siri control, so wherever Siri is, Siri and search, and then you go into this section, this is brand new. So this before searching section has never been there before. So I think it refers to when you do use spotlight search and you swipe down, if you do notice, you get some suggestions when you swipe down. So if you turn that off, let's see if we go into the settings, let's turn off both of those, show recent and show suggestions, then swipe down, you can see that they're actually all gone. So I like to keep that feature on, I think it's actually kind of intuitive and for the most part it gets it correct in terms of what applications I want to use during what time of day. But if you do want to turn it off and you don't want, you know, Siri kind of listening to you all the time and you don't want Siri to suggest anything to you, then you can turn them off. But as you can see, I toggle them back on and all of my Siri suggestions are back exactly where they should be. And then the last thing that we noticed was that Apple actually brought back that Dolby Atmos moniker underneath a specific song that actually shows off that it is a Dolby Atmos song. So, you know, that was there before, but it apparently was taken away and now it came back. So overall, those are all the features that we could find right away. Nothing too crazy. Again, nothing's going to change your life, you know, instantaneously, but they're new features nonetheless, which Apple normally around the beta 5 update is done with new features and they're all onto bug fixes and performance enhancements, but they're still throwing a couple things at us and we'll see if we actually get some new updates as the days go on. But now let's actually talk about Stage Manager. So let's test out Stage Manager because this is the number one reason why I tell people not to update to iPadOS 16 quite yet, just because of the inconsistencies of Stage Manager. I always like to see how long it takes to actually, you know, ignite the monitor itself, but you can see it takes a little while, it does get recognized eventually, and then it pops up. And a lot of people have asked me about this monitor. This is by a company called Innocent. In my opinion, it's the best bang for buck ultra wide that you can find. This is a 44 inch 3840 by 1080. So it is a 1080p monitor. It's not, you know, a 4K monitor, but those are gonna cost you well over $1,000. I believe this one's like five or $600. So if you guys wanna check it out, I'll leave it linked down in the description below. But what I wanna test out is just the overall stability. So you can actually see down here, somebody brought up to me that, you know, I'm a big fan of using custom icons. So you can see that these are kind of like black and grayed out. These are icons that I just created that I ended up mapping with shortcuts in order to have cooler icons for applications. But you can see that sometimes, so let's say, let me open up something like Twitter. So Twitter doesn't open up, right? It doesn't really want to open up with that. So if I try to, let's say, open up YouTube, again, it also doesn't open. But if I try to grab Twitter and move it over, then it loads up and does what it's supposed to do. But somebody brought up to me in the comments a couple videos ago that maybe it's because of the fact that I have these icons down here that that happens. So if I open up Safari, for instance, opens up perfectly fine. You can see it's loading up ESPN. If I try to grab, let's say, the files application, that also opens, and I can just drag this over here. So you can see overall that it's pretty stable. So I can resize windows. I can grab, let's say, you know, Twitter, move it over here. So now I have three windows. Let's grab YouTube as well. We got the four windows going, so that's beautiful to see. I can click this right here. I can move it to the iPad. And then every now and then, so you can see that on the iPad, it kind of, it's not working, right? On the iPad itself, YouTube is not working well. So if I go over here, quit out of all these, you can see that the iPad itself just shuts down. So this happens on occasion. It's not a detriment. I've never lost any data or anything like that, but I just, all I have to do is swipe back up and then everything kind of just loads up again and nothing has really changed. Like everything's still in the multitasking window. So there's YouTube. If I go up here, you know, here is my last homepage, but it breaks, right? So it's not perfect. It's still a little bit wonky. Like if I do too much and I don't follow like a perfect like set of rules or a perfect kind of you know, path to use these applications, then it's not gonna work and it's not gonna work super well. So if I open up files again, you can see that it's there, so it does work. But one thing I do like about this ultra wide monitor and being able to use stage manager is that I can open this up all the way. So like, look, it's taking up all 44 inches of the monitor and I can move around. Everything works how it's supposed to. So there is my last thumbnail from a while ago. 
So, I mean, overall, the idea of Stage Manager is cool and I'm excited for the future of it. So, like, if I open up LumaFusion, again, it's one of those, like, custom apps, so it's not going to work. If I grab LumaFusion and, let's say, move it to the iPad or something, it doesn't let me press the dots. Or if I full screen it, move it to display. Again, it's not working how it's supposed to work. Like, this should be a flawless experience and it's not quite there yet. So, hopefully, when Apple does release it, and I believe there are delays, boom, there it goes again. So, that's twice in this video itself that it did shut down. So Stage Manager kind of works when it wants to, but then a lot of the times it doesn't, especially when you get a little too complicated. And that's just the situation that we're in when it comes to Stage Manager. So hopefully that changes up and Apple kind of fixes that up for the October release of iPadOS 16. But let's check on the battery life and then finish up this video. And then the very last thing I like to bring up is actually battery life and performance over time. So if we go to the battery life, and this will usually refer to actually beta 4 because we've only had beta 5 for a couple hours now. But you can see that in the last 10 days, we're doing okay with screen on time. So if we go on a day like Friday right here, we got three hours of screen on time and it took up almost 100% battery. You saw that LumaFusion, Affinity Photo, and Slack were the big culprits of taking up battery right there. Then a day like Monday, LumaFusion took up 50% battery and we used it for about an hour. So you can see that task intensive applications will suck up battery a lot. Overall, battery life has been improving steadily over time in terms of the iPad because the iPad has been a very, very bad battery life machine. But I've mentioned this in the past that I'm not the best in terms of performing best battery practices because I always have my screen on, I'm always connected to the Apple keyboard, you know, I'm always plugged in when I'm using Stage Manager, I'm playing video games a lot of the time, using very task intensive applications, but overall battery life definitely is on the upturn with iPadOS 16. So as you guys saw with iPadOS 16 beta 5, there weren't too many new features. We had a bunch of new splash screens, which you guys saw during the video, some better performance with Stage Manager, and we're almost there in my opinion. I've already had it crash a few times, especially when I'm doing too many things. So it's kind of in the situation where like in 2007 when Apple released their first iPhone and Steve Jobs had to follow like a perfect script to actually demo the iPhone in front of everybody. If not, it would have like crashed and burned. That's kind of how I feel when using Stage Manager right now. So like if I don't do everything precisely or do everything kind of slowly, and if I do too much at once, it's gonna to start to break down and then eventually I'm gonna get that little ring which restarts the actual iPad itself. You don't lose any data. I haven't had anything bad happen in terms of a data loss or anything like that, but it is kind of annoying that it does shut down. And again, the main reason, especially in the release notes that Apple is letting us know that Stage Manager still crashes, is because it's optimized for 4K resolutions and higher. And the one that I have behind me is actually a 3840 by 1080, so it's only a 1080p display, even though it is an ultra wide. But again, those are all things which will hopefully be fixed when the official release does come out in hopefully about a month or so now at this point, because there is rumors that a September 6 event is right around the corner. But that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. If you guys did enjoy, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so that I know that you made it to the very end of the video. And let me know in the comments, did you guys update to beta five? Are you guys on the public developer or the regular developer program to test out all these new features? Let me know in the comments, I'm always curious. But if you guys wanna see some more videos on iPadOS, iOS, and macOS, click on one of these videos right here because I know you guys are gonna enjoy them. But I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here.